Bare knuckle fighter Mark Godber says he's going to use his hands of God against LeVar Johnson at Valor BK2. You don't want to miss this story, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Must Love MMA, where combat sports fans get a rear view inside the fighter and his mindset. I'm Susan Singori. We release a new video every week, and joining me today is Mark Godber, all the way from Phuket. He's fighting at Valor Bare Knuckle 2. How are you this morning, or maybe it's this evening for you, Mark? Yeah. Evening for me, yeah, we're just gone at most time, yeah, yeah, we're just gone 9, 9 p.m. in the evening. I believe you guys are 12, 12 hours behind, yeah? So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, it's, so a nice early one for it's you. a very early one for me, but you're worth getting up early for, sir. So oh, let's jump you. into this thank right you. away and talk a little bit about the fact that you've got a fight coming at Valor BK2 January 11th. By the way, we will be there, folks. And um, what specific training have you changed up to prepare for your opponent, LeVar Johnson? Um, if, if I'm honest, is LeVar's LeVar. LeVar is... A big dude. Um, he's a banger. He's a knockout artist. So you know, there's no, there's no. If it, I think, if you if you look at it from a boxing point of view, take out the takedowns, take down the, take out the kicks, take out, you know, take out everything to do with MMA and just just narrow it down to boxing. Um, we're, we're very similar in styles. You now we both hit hard. We both come forward and we both go for the knockout. So um, the way I've been dealing with this is um, obviously it's going to be no secret. It's just working on my movement, okay. different angles, cutting angles, learning to slip, um, and just just beating him to the punch. I think that's, that's what's going to win this fight is speed and accuracy. So um, that's, that's what we're... Uh, that's what we're working on. This it's no secret. There's no, there's no. Um, you know, we're, we're both veterans of of the combat sport um, game now. So it, it it's no secret. He knows my weaknesses. I know his. So it's just a matter of who implements um, the better game plan on the night. When you're thinking of bare knuckle, explain to our viewers a little bit about the rules of the game, so they understand a little bit more about how it works. Yeah, so basically, um, with Valor, I know with other organizations, they allow you to what you call dirty box, which is where you can grab over the back of the head and up the car and stuff like that. But with Valor, um, they've really gone back to their old traditional um, boxing roots. So it's pro boxing rules, exactly the same as pro boxing. It's just that obviously no gloves. Um, I think. Um, they've gone even even to the point they've gone that far back when before you know before gloves come into boxing. Um, even like when things, a lot of people have been saying to me, why why are you guys wearing these sort of pants? You know, like we wear the, <laughs> the, the long pants. So, but it's all it's all to do with tradition. They're bringing back old tradition. So I wanted to get back to something you were speaking about earlier in our interview. You were talking about your game plan for Lavar Johnson. But what are the holes can you find so you can take advantage of them when you do go into fight? I'm not going to be like every other fighter and get on my back foot and be worried about his power. I'm one of these fighters. I'm a kill me, kill fighter. And, um, I will be coming forward and I will be coming to fight. So let's see how, how we both deal with that because I'm pretty sure the is the same sort of fighter yes. as well. And, and, and it's going to be fireworks either way. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm excited for the fight. Um, I wanted to confirm, have you confirm a fact for me. So the stats that I read online say that he does have a bigger reach than you. If that is correct, how will you combat that? Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of the, the stats, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get someone to... Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to get someone to... Uh, update my Wikipedia and stuff because of my stats they have they had me down to six foot um, two last time and um, 
I'm not, you know, I'm not, there's six or five, four, so okay. th th there's where I'm stuck strong. And also his reach is, I believe, 80, 80, 80 inches. Yes, it is. I believe my red, yeah, mine's 79.5. Okay. So uh, my actual reach, my stat, the, the stats that come up on, um, you know, come up on Wikipedia and right. stuff is what people just put in and stuff like that. But I've had, when I have my reach over the UFC and stuff like that, it was 79.5. So, yeah, and, and I believe um, Lavar's 6'4 as well. So yes. yeah, we're, we're pretty much exactly the same stats, you know, the, like reach height is so. It's a case of, like I said, um, a case of um, movement, doing lots of movement drills, moving my head, making sure I keep my hands up. Levar is one of these guys you can't really right. go in half hard with your hands down and, um, you know, look at, wait for him to throw punches at, at you because uh, he's a knockout eyes. He, yes, he, he, he knocks guys out. So we, we, we have to be very clever and very. Um, calculated with the way we come forward and attack this guy. You know, I'm curious, how much of the game for you is mental preparation? 95% um, of it. <laughs> Seriously as well, but for me, if my head's right, right. Um, if, my, if my head is right, I had an interview this morning we, we got onto this, um, if my head is right, then um, the, in my own head, uh, there isn't a guy that can beat me, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is why, um, and a lot of fighters can relate to this, this is why I have to, when I've got big fights like this coming up, I have to take myself oh, wow. out of the equation of everyday living. I have to take myself away. I lock myself, I come away over to Thailand. I lock myself away in a gym with like-minded people that are all going through the yes, same I thing, understand. fighters. Uh, yeah, so um, the mental preparation is, is key in any combat sports, I believe. Um, uh, we, we can all train. You see it time and time again as well. You see guys that are absolute killers in the gym. Right. And I've seen, you know, I, I, I love, you know, I'm a veteran of the sport now. I've seen guys in the gym and they, and they literally hand, they, 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 they hand their asses to everyone in the gym. And then you see them on fight night under the bright lights, yes. and they just don't perform because they don't deal with it. And then, and then it's the complete opposite. You get guys in the gym that are like, you know, they're not very good, or whatever. And then on the night, like, where does this guy come from? So um, <laughs> the mental preparation is definitely a big, big factor in all combat sports. I've been attending some bare knuckle events recently, and I'm curious again about any pre-fight rituals you do uh, on fight day, and what goes through your head as you make that walk? You know, um, so I explained this to um, someone before. Someone says to me, um, excuse my language, but I'm gonna be blunt. Someone says, says to me <laughs> that don't beat yourself before you fight. And I say to everyone, this is the way I explain it, I say, I completely and utterly crack myself before every fight. There's no, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm, I'm scared before every oh, fight yeah. I do. But then, but then, what people don't get is um, they, they call us adrenaline junkies. People yes. That live in <laughs> and then, if, if you look into the science of of it, in order for your brain to release the chemical mm -hmm. adrenaline. You have to be literally scared out of your wits, and that's your body's natural mechanism to it releases adrenaline to get you through that. And and, and, and for me, yeah. that's that's what I'm addicted to, the adrenaline. You know, so without without being scared, I wouldn't be able to get the adrenaline buzz that I get out of what I do. All right, we've got to talk about a little bit about what bare knuckle is more about. What is it like since you have a background in MMA as well? What is it like to hit someone without any gloves on? What does it feel like? Um, I don't know if you can see, but I've literally, this hand now, I've only got two knuckles left on this hand. Um, if you land it sweet, they, they feel great. 
you land a sweet shot, they feel great. But if you throw a hook, if you catch yeah. the back of the head, they hurt. Um, yeah, obviously that is the downside of it. You know, you, you, it ain't a case of if you've got career in bare knuckle. It's not a case of if you break your hands. Yeah. It's a case of when I break my hands because you are going to break your hands. Talk to me a little bit about the fact that because you have no gloves on and you can break your hand, how bare knuckle is really a very strategic game. Yeah. Um, it's war, isn't it? You know, I, I say this is, yeah, you do have to pick your shots and stuff. Yeah, you do. But at the same time, if you see shots there, you've got to go yeah. for it, you know? And I think if you go into the fight worrying about breaking your hands. Good point. It, it's funny, I almost sound like I'm contradicting myself a little bit there. You're always um, conscious about breaking your hands, and so you're always, you do have to sort of like, home in on what, what shots you're picking and where you're going to land and stuff like that. But then at the same time, you can be overconscious of it because the last thing you want to be doing is hesitating throwing your shots because that's when you're yeah. going to get tapped and hit. So, um, yeah, it's difficult. It's a difficult one. I think you've just got to go into it with the, with the mental aspect of, if, if it breaks, it breaks. I'll just keep fighting until, <laughs> you know, the fight's over and then I'll deal with it after, you know? So that's, yeah. All right, we've got to talk about Valor Bare Knuckle 1 because it was an amazing, amazing fight. At round one, in round one, rather, at 50 seconds in, you defeated Jack May. It was a short fight, but can you break that fight down for us, sir? Yeah, um, I did exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I knew it was, obviously, I've been in, I've, I've had, I was, you know, every single one of us going into that tournament was very experienced combat sport athletes. But one thing I knew I had the upper hand on is I knew not one of those guys has had a bare right. knuckle boxing fight. Right. I have. I knew going into that tournament that my game plan was get in, that first yeah. fight, get in, get yeah. out quick, kill or be killed. Get in there, swing for the fences, try and take try and take his head off before he takes mine off and get in and out as quick as I could and mm. take minimal damage so I was fresh for the second fight. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what happened. So, um, you know, it, 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 was, it wasn't luck that first fight, that is what we planned to do and that's what, what happened. So, um, and then we moved on, obviously, to the next fight after that. Yeah. Speaking of the next fight, Mighty Mo, another amazing performance, another first round TKO. You had a series of punches. Can you break that fight down for us, sir? Yeah, um, it did go in my favor as well because um, the, the, the night couldn't have went any better, if I'm honest with you. Uh, before I was speaking to my, my, my main coach at Phuket top team, Marley Swindles, and we were speaking to him. And our game plan was obviously for the first fight, get Jack May out as quick as we could, and then hope that um, So Good You and Mighty Mo had a three round war. And we couldn't, it couldn't have went any better. They had a three round war. Mm -hmm. So I knew, you know, I, I give Mighty Mo credit. He's, he's a guy that. Yes. Um, I've looked up to him before I even started my own career, you know, I've I followed these guys. and uh, But I knew he took a lot of damage as well. So going into it, I was probably, I had the upper hand. So, uh, but even still, um, I take my hat off to him. You know, he still got back. It just testament of his character, having a three round war like that, still step still stepping in. So I gotta ask you, what's it like fighting in the pit? And for those of us who don't know, it's no ropes, no cages, it's... For me, it was like growing up as a kid. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I grew up on a rough council estate, so... Okay, you know, there wasn't fair no enough. Ropes stuff back in the day. Now this is, if I'm gonna be honest, this is why I started doing martial arts, combat sports and stuff, because I wanted to turn my negative energy into positive energy. And mm -hmm. I think you find that with a lot of fighters as well. We've all come from, not all of us were blessed with- Yes, um, agreed. You know, not all of us was blessed with, you know, great, I'm not saying, you know, 
parental wise or anything, but you know, great surroundings and uh, being born with a silver spoon or whatever. You know, I don't mean that disrespect, but not all of us was. Um, a lot of us did come from the streets. A lot of us did come from hard backgrounds mm. where it was sort of survival of the fittest and stuff. And uh, the bare knuckle boxing scene and the pit and stuff sort of it brought back a lot of old school memories and stuff. So um, in one respect, it it, um, it sort of uh, it, it sort of turned a switch back in my head from my older days that I learned to tame. Went through martial arts, but it sort of brought it back mm -hmm. out of me again. But this time, only um, more controlled, and obviously in a controlled environment, and you know, and a respectable environment. All right, as you know, I had to cancel your interview last week. I'm sorry, but due to difficulties with Apple, I was uh, without a computer. But in spending my time with many a tech support rep last week, Brandon at Apple Tech, shout out to Brandon because you were one of the nicer guys, wanted me to ask you this question. He wants to know why you chose bare knuckle boxing over say other combat sports. Um, because if you look at my record, 95, yes. 96, 97% of my record is through uh, knockouts. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, I threw my hand. These are my best weapons. So, um, when you get a sport like bare knuckle boxing, come on. You go for it. So I think you certainly have found your uh, your home at Valor Bare Knuckle, and you, we've seen in the past how dominant you've been in the bare knuckle boxing industry as well. So good for you. Final question. What has combat sports taught you? Um, it's taught me uh, a lot of things. Respect. Um, it's taught me uh, I'm not invincible. It's taught me that to be humble. It's mm. also taught me that there's, if I'm not humble, there's always someone that will humble me. Um, it's calmed me down. Mentally, it's calmed me down. Like I said, I went through a little bit of a story you know, earlier on in my in, in, in the interview where I said, you know, it's brought out the tweet of me. I, I did grow up and I was a bit of a rogue. I was a bit of a scrapper, you know, I wasn't, you know, I was a lad, Jack the lad you know, and sort of thing. So it, it for me, it was like my niche. I, it was something that um, really, um, I really found out who I was through my martial you. arts. Um, and, and yeah, and it's, it's done me the world of good. It's calmed me down. It's kept me on the right path. Um, I dread to think where I'd be if I didn't walk into the martial arts gym when I did, because, you know, I was going down the wrong mm. routes. I was with him in the wrong crowds. I was, you know, I was doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, uh, with drink and amongst other things and stuff so it really got me Good back on the straight and narrow and I, I, I really do owe a hell of a lot to uh, the martial arts on the whole it really and I, and I advise anyone you know I advise anyone that's looking to maybe you know for some focus and, and just to learn some respect and, and stuff to get, get yourself down to your local dojo or mm. MMA gym or whatever and just give it a go and see where it takes you because you know mine started off as a bet in a pub interesting I was uh, yeah it, it, I was I was sat in a pub I was drinking <laughs> it was my 25th birthday oh. and my mate bet me uh, I was watching USC on the TV and, and, and I said I'm going to do that and he really? laughed at me he just laughed at me he laughed at me and then he said to me you'll never do that and I said why not he said you haven't got the discipline and that was enough that was enough to make me switch in my head and I thought right I'll show you six months later I was having my first MMA fight wow. uh, two years later I was, I was ranked within the top ten in the UK um, maybe about eight years later I was in the UFC so you know nothing's impossible it just depends I agree. on um, willing to put into it and how much uh, passion and drive you've got so yeah they, 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 martial arts was my saviour definitely yes good advice for people who are sort of trying to figure out where they're going. And I think so many young people as well can relate to the fact that, you know, maybe when they don't have a, 
proper home life and they have aggression to take out, it's best to go to the gym and let that aggression go out there. So I applaud you for sharing that story with us. Before we go today, Mark, hands of God, God beer, is there anything else you want to add today, sir? Um, no, I'll just, uh, just, just thank him, you know, everyone around me, from my coaches, all the guys at Phuket Top Team. They've been an absolute, all of the guys at the team, you know, they, they've been, they've welcomed me with open arms. They've got my head back to where it should be. Uh, thanks to Boyd Clark, the owner as well, you know, and yeah, and I'm, I'm also currently looking for sponsors. I've okay. got a huge fight out around the world um, on you know pay per view around the world. Um, so if anyone wants to get their logo on my uh, on my pants, <laughs> then uh, yeah, hit me up on my social media. There's always a space for sponsors. All right, Fight Fans, what does this whole interview mean to you? It means, you know what, I work for you, the Fight Fans, and no one else. So, I never sleep. You can grab me on Twitter, ask a question. Mark never sleeps either, because we're always uh, up late, both of us. You can also find me on YouTube. I answer my, my questions there. If you have a comment, suggestion, or story, please make sure to like and follow and share this video. I'd also like to encourage you to look at some of my other bare knuckle boxing stories here from Valor B BK1. And Mark, we will see you January 11th next year, 2020, at Valor Bare Knuckle 2 in Kissimmee. And we'll be there live bringing you all the information before, after, and during the fight at Valor Bare Knuckle 2, January 11th, 2020 in Kissimmee, Florida. Mark Godbert, thank you so much for your time and good luck, sir. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.